when you prepare for an earthquake, you're also preparing essentially for other disasters. A great idea is to have a little grab and go kit with just a few things to eat, um, some comfortable clothing and your um, documents, and then you know, ensuring that tall and heavy furniture is strapped to studs, not putting a heavy picture over the head of your bed. And when you're putting your food uh, away, make sure that the, the non-perishable food that could be used for um, a disaster situation is put in somewhere that's accessible. The other thing you can do is store heavier items on lower shelves or in lower cupboards and then lighter items like these paperbacks up on higher shelves. Most people think of earthquakes happening in British Columbia, but there's actual considerable, considerable um, earthquake hazard in Eastern Canada as well. The type of crust and also the type of uh, construction that you have in, in Eastern Canada um, is not as resilient, generally speaking, to earthquakes. The Val de Bois earthquake a few years ago was a magnitude five. Fortunately, people there um, have not been brought up to do the, the, the drop cover hold on response to earthquakes and a lot of people ran out of buildings and that's one of the most dangerous things you can do. That's why we encourage everyone in Canada, even if you live in the prairies, to prepare yourself. If you feel an earthquake or receive an alert for one, you drop down to the ground in the room you're in so that the earthquake doesn't topple you. You get underneath some sturdy furniture and you hold on and you cover your head and neck. You wait until the shaking stops, then you count to 60, then you carefully come out from under the furniture. If you cannot get underneath something in the room you're in, you go to an interior corner, you squat down and you cover your head and neck. If you're in bed, you stay in bed, cover your head with your pillows, and just wait until the shaking stops. If you're in a wheelchair and you feel an earthquake or receive an alert, you lock your wheels, and if you can, you crouch over and cover your head and neck with your arms. If you're in a walker, you sit in the walker, put on the brake, and if you can, you tr crouch over and you cover your head and neck with your arms. If you're walking with a cane, so try to get to the ground and get underneath something that's going to protect you from falling debris, hold on to it and cover your head and neck. Nearly any time you have a strong earthquake, you can expect to have aftershocks, which are generally smaller earthquakes that occur right afterwards. The larger ones tend to happen uh, within days or weeks after the main event, but they can happen later on. If you have a very large earthquake, like a subduction zone event, aftershocks can continue for years. But each time you experience one, you treat it the same way as you did the main event, which is to drop cover, hold on, or take other protective actions. Anytime you experience a very strong earthquake, so it's difficult to stand, or the shaking lasts more than a minute, that's the kind of earthquake that can generate a tsunami. So you want to get up and away from the coastline immediately if you feel strong shaking. And there are very important things to know. One is that the first wave is usually not the highest. Even small waves can knock you off your feet. Most municipalities put uh, tsunami evacuation information on their websites or inundation maps. Um, so look at those for where you work, for where you live, where you tend to play. The idea is you know where to go before you ever receive an alert.